say. So here we are in our continuing discussion of the Mandukya Upanishad, Karika, the commentary on Mandukya Upanishad by Shankaracharya's guru's guru and Shankaracharya himself explaining his uh, guru's guru's karika or commentary. So the commentary on the commentary. <laughs> and it's very illuminating. Uh, and also in this verse is a very good example of scripture humor. Let's check it out. Utseka udaderya dvat kushagre naika binduna manaso nigrahas tadvad bhaveda parike dataha. The mind can be brought under control only by an unrelenting effort like that required to empty an ocean drop by drop with a blade of kusha grass. <laughs> In other words, Rots of ruck. <laughs> the mind is a force of nature. It's like an uncontrollable animal. It cannot be brought under control. It's not designed to be brought under control. If you want to control the mind, it means eternal vigilance. Because as soon as you relax your uh, control, your will, the mind goes free. It jumps away. Anyone who's tried it can easily confirm this. You can't control the mind. Not by an effort of will, anyway. Well, how do you control a wild animal? Huh? like a lion or a tiger, or well, actually any animal. You have to seduce them. You have to make friends with them. You have to have a relationship with them. Treat them as, well, what they are, a powerful, independent entity. The mind is not yours. Certainly, the mind is not you. It's not part of you. It is a force of nature that responds to threats in the environment. That's how it was designed. But what happens is that we misuse the mind to try to serve our desires. And of course, because desires are unnatural, they're part of the ego, the idea that we are a separate individual Therefore, it all backfires. <laughs> the mind uh, is well known for this, that as long as you desire something, the mind won't give it to you. But as soon as you relax and you don't want it anymore, then it comes. Isn't it? I mean, isn't this the way the world works? The whole thing means that this urge to have a separate existence, an I, identity, <laughs> an individual existence, is doomed. It means, basically, it means eternal suffering. You know, it's like the, the royal road to hell. Because you're always going to be struggling with the mind. The mind is like a snake, you know, a boa constrictor or something. Once it's got you and wraps its coils around you, there's no escape. So then why do yogis take this arduous path of trying to control the mind? Well, basically, they don't know any better. But actually... It's due to ego. I will control the mind. 
Huh? No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. Because as soon as you relax your efforts, you know, it's like trying to cram a, a spring into a little box or something. And as, as soon as you have, have to push it constantly, and as soon as you relax the pressure, boing, you, you know, you can't stop it. So what is the answer then? Well, the answer is that the path of yoga, the path of will, is unsustainable. You can accept that right now, or you can accept it in a million births from now. It's up to you. So this is why, from the very beginning of this channel, we said you have to train the mind, not to control it, but to mold it in such a way that it will help your quest for enlightenment and not hinder it. Most of us don't take any care to train the mind, but we allow the mind to be conditioned by the environment, the culture. And the culture and the environment are not your friends. They're not going to condition your mind in a way that's beneficial for you, but they're going to condition it in a way that's beneficial for them. Take school, for example. Please, take it. <laughs> school, although it's supposed to be about learning stuff, is actually about sociological conditioning and mind control controlling the mind. See, it's a form of operant conditioning, behavioral conditioning. It's designed by psychiatrists, like television. My first job right out of music school was composing music for television, movies, and ads, and stuff like that. And I worked with the Ames Ad Agency in New York, and I did many campaigns and so on. But anyway, we always had an advising psychiatrist in every one of these campaigns to help us design the ads, including my little part, the music, in such a way that it would influence the target audience which is almost always children. Let that sink in for a minute. Television and especially advertising is designed to influence the minds of children by expert behavioral psychologists and psychiatrists. So most of us spend our childhood uh, when we're not in school, <laughs> sitting in front of the TV, isn't it? Or the internet, which is basically TV with a million channels. And all the operant conditioning is simply going in without any critical analysis and setting up our minds to make us miserable for the rest of our lives. Oh, you need a new car. Oh, you need these expensive clothes. Oh, you need this, you need that, that you don't really need. All for what? To enhance the ego. Huh? You need to drive this expensive motorcycle so that girls will love you. No, they're still not going to love you. <laughs> Because they've got their own conditioning, which puts them in competition, not with you, but with other girls. The whole thing is psychologically designed to screw you up. That's why I don't watch television. I know what goes into it. It's poison. It's horrible. So, what's the answer? Simply drop it. Instead of media 
conditioning your mind. Instead of school and parents and friends or what to speak of uh, uh, your boss at work conditioning your mind, let the scriptures condition your mind. Perform bhakti and recite a mantra and let the mantra condition your mind. And then your mind will become your friend. See, because the mind is actually controlled by God. God or, and or goddess. The mind is actually a force of nature controlled by God, by higher authorities. So if you take in this reality, huh, if you understand what this shloka is getting at and you stop trying to control the mind and instead try to make the mind your friend by training it, huh, by giving it some beautiful thoughts every day, then slowly, slowly the mind becomes your friend. And instead of becoming a host to a million unsatisfiable desires, the mind will take you to the lotus feet of the Lord, where there's salvation and real enjoyment. Uh, knowing that you are not dependent on the world for happiness is a huge thing. What if all of a sudden you become independent of the conditions around you, the environment, the people around you and you're happy because of your relationship with spirit instead. How would that make you feel? See, this is simply a step on the way to self-realization. An actual self-realization is complete independence from all of this relative world. This is something worth striving for. And the way to do it is not by trying to force the mind to be quiet. It won't work, can't work. Just like emptying the ocean with a blade of kusa grass. <laughs> it's a wonderful snarky humor. <laughs> you know, you're never gonna get there. You're just going to waste your time. So instead, Follow the scriptures. What do they say? Do karma yoga. And when karma yoga matures, it becomes bhakti yoga. And when bhakti yoga matures, it becomes raja yoga, meditation. And then the mind is automatically controlled by pleasure, by beauty, by love. This is what we've been getting at since the beginning of this channel. I don't know why people just don't get it. Well, because their minds are conditioned by ignorance, by nonsense. Uh, they don't get it because they are conditioned to look at things in the wrong way. Just like somebody made a comment the other day that about higher dimensions or something like this. And where, where does this idea come from? Not the Vedas. It comes from Western science. It's part of the reductionistic campaign to reduce everything to math, abstract relationships. And that's not what this is about. This is about consciousness. This is about how to transcend the body, the senses, and the mind. Not how to get trapped by them, but how to escape them completely. Because that's the key to attaining the highest enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.